Darling, and is you, you've um, got a system here yep. of measuring the number of times that this shaft oh. turns. Yeah. Um, it would be very easy to have a mechanical counter, but mm. you've merely for logistical reasons, yep. you've chosen to do what? What have you? Uh, it's an what's electro, this little item it's here. It's electromechanical. This is a micro switch, and if I Ooh, let's have a look. Oh, I can hear somebody clicking. So when you switch that switch, yep. so we'll have a look what's happening thing. here. When Ian, every time Ian has that rotate, this electromechanical device inches forward by one. So it's actually literally counting the number of times that axle has turned. And it's merely confirming that we got up to the distance that we said we did on here. Yeah. It's giving a digital result. It's giving a digital result. <coughs> if people like numbers, if they want to see mm -hmm. this on their phone or, or on their, their, their uh, camera at home, um, then they can see a digital uh, representation of that. So, but and the counter was on the original machine as well, yes, which we've spoken yes. about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, um, uh, we spoke to this guy last night, and he was impressed at the speed with which you are continuously getting a result. So the machine doesn't have to wait until it's finished it's doing its calculations. From the very moment you start the machine, it is making a real-time output. Mm -hmm. There's an output from the calculation constantly coming out. So this graph is constantly being scribed all the time the machine is running. And our, our friend last night, was it Daniel? Yes, uh, Daniel, yes, yeah, yeah from Daniel engineering. Daniel last night yeah. pointed out that he'd give his back teeth if he could get real-time complex equations like this with an output part way through, because then he'd know that how he programmed his machine was actually correct because they're not always certain. Yeah. It's not just that the maths um, is so complicated they couldn't get it right. They're not always certain that the model they've got of what it is that they're trying to replicate, the maths is correct. They may have a sign wrong, which is actually in differentiation can happen quite easily. Um, uh, they may have some aspect that they actually haven't got a term in their mathematics, either it's contributing too little or too much to the final result. And on the graph, you'll start to see, oh my gosh, we've got a sudden big spike. We're not expecting that. Why? Yeah. And Daniel was quite impressed that whilst the machine's doing its various calculations, you can see part way through the journey. And I would say, just at that moment, we have two circle tests here, one that went very well and one that went slightly less well last night. That would be a good way we, we, of visual, we, perhaps just quickly visualising that whole thing have a look at that side by side. Yeah. yeah. So not necessarily just the accuracy, but just what can happen when the machine, when there's an error in the machine. Yeah, and, let's, and let's, talk, let's talk about... Um, uh, and that, do you, you can talk about it if you want, uh, Ian. Yes, there is a, an equation that you can actually put into the machine, which we'll explain later, uh, which is this equation here. And the solution should be a circle. And this is a run... Uh, Just I zoom into that, if you can, Tom, because that's actually a famous equation. That's yeah. quite well known. Yeah. Our mathematician friends will know that the, the Z here, minus Z, is actually the radius of the circle that it's about to inscribe. Yeah. And on a, a trial run I did at the end of September, this was the start, and then the pen drew a circle, and that is the finish point here. Mm -hmm. And that's within about 0.3% of the starting so point. So it's the thickness of the pen. Yeah, more or less the thickness of the pen, as far as I could, yeah. could actually measure. Okay. Now, yesterday we tried it, because the machine has uh, driven something like about 300 miles in the back of the car, and um, we started drawing the circle just here. Uh, one of the little wheels on the integrating disc was slipping. Then it started to grip, and as you can see, it started to draw a circle. Perfectly. Perfectly. Mm -hmm. Then the same wheel started to slip here, so you only had one of the axes being plotted, and then all of a sudden it started to grip again. I think you just gave it a knock. I just gave it a, 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 a <laughs> knock, a knock with my it. sonic screwdriver. And again, there was a bit of slippage here. And as you can see, the whole thing has got out of out of synchronisation. Mm -hmm. And that's the spiral that we've been talking about in yeah. terms of mm -hmm. that gets yes. created by this. And yeah. And yeah. But uh, again, you could actually see that <coughs> in real time. Yes. So you could see there's a fault. Yeah. But the, and I think that's what Daniel, the point Daniel was making last mm -hmm. night is, it's great that you can see. Literally, the mistakes, not mistakes, the errors that are, that are, that are in the machine at each given point. So we, we've got a machine that we can, um, we both need to calibrate, 
Yeah. But we can also see quite quickly when the calibration goes out, yeah. because there's a, a little step uh, in the movement of the pen there. The machine works. Uh, Ian, do we just want to talk about the positive things here about programming? Because yeah. to my eye, programming the machine is really easy. Because you're merely taking inputs and outputs and screwing shafts together. Just, just mm. have an explanation of what, what, what you've done here, Ian. Yes. I'll just come around there. Sorry, just get right in with you so we can see it. Right. Uh, this whole section here is how you really connect the various parts of the machine together to do uh, whatever equation you want. Uh, I've described how the machine was set up to draw to um, integrate the velocity time graph but if you wanted then to do the circle test you have to add another integrating disk in because this is a second order equation so it's literally using a second piece of machinery there's d2 the d by dt squared mm -hmm. that's a second order you need a second integrating disk so you're measuring the rate of change of the rate of change the rate of change, the rate of change. The rate of change. so for this particular um, setup um, you want to disconnect the tables from the drive that oh, drives right. that. Mm -hmm. And you just simply um, get this bevel gear here on the, the output. And you feed it back into itself. And you feed it back into itself via the bevel gears to the table. Mm -hmm. And then you disconnect this part here which is, um, was formerly um, displacing the table from that motor. Mm -hmm. That's now, the time motor. The time motor. Yes. Now, if you then follow the shaft back, I will then tighten this universal joint here, which then goes into the output of the second integrator. So I'm now displacing the table on the output of the rate of change of the rate of change. Mm -hmm. Now... Is it true to say that you've cross-coupled them? I've cross-coupled them. Mm -hmm. So this is the first integrator measuring the rate of change. It's going through here. And this is being um, still connected to the uh, output pen there. So we can just see what's going. This is like a monitoring thing. Yeah. We're actually watching what the thing is naturally yes. doing by itself. I'll take a step back so we can see Ian's yeah. yeah. so, so it's still attached to the output pen here. So we yep. can see the Which, result on the table. Yes. So that <coughs> output pen is measuring the rate of change. Mm -hmm. The table is now being driven by the rate of change of the rate of change. Mm -hmm. so, the second, so the second disc yeah. is driving the table. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now... Is you then come back to this part of the machine. So you want the output of the first integrator to be displacing the second the, the integrator. The input. The input to the second to the integrator. Second, yeah. And again, it's just a matter of doing tightening up, that, tightening up that screw there, and that's connected. So as that moves, it will input and displace the second. So the movement in the first table moves the second, second table, table but also feeds uh, back to the yes. output graph as well. Yeah. Well, it, it, yeah. we, we, we could, you could have picked up either table, yeah. actually. Yeah. It, it yeah. wouldn't have mattered which no. one. And then the output of this one is linked to the input of the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're all cross-linked. They're cross-coupled. Cross-coupled. Okay. So output to input, mm. output to input, and then we have the output of one table being plotted against the output of the second table. Mm -hmm. now, and that it, should be a circle. It, it, I, I know this sounds a little bit wild. Um, if you can imagine um, this line being uh, rotated around here, if you, if you put a, a, a bob of some kind of blob, um, some kind of uh, circular object, look, a circular object here, and you have this rotating like that. You can imagine this is going round and round. But if you looked at it edge on, you would see it doing that. Yeah. If you measured that there, it would look like a sine wave. Mm -hmm. So we're actually what Ian's produced is an oscillator. Mm -hmm. And it produces sine waves. And our friend Daniel, again, was very quick to point out, ah, but I always thought that 
um, to produce a circle, you need two lots of sine waves. Well, you do <coughs> as long as you differentiate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not differentiating, we're integrating. But if you look edge on here, the movement of this is actually a sine wave. If you looked at it like that, so that's the y coordinate, if you like. The x coordinate, if you rotate it like that, is a cosine wave. Mm -hmm. So we've got a sine wave in that direction, a cosine wave in that way, if you bothered to differentiate it. This is not a differentiator, it's an integrator. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of maths, you might need to look it up. Yep. But it's completely valid that Daniel had that worry because he was trying to think, well, all circles have got sines and cosines in them. Ian's machine doesn't need that because it's merely looking at the rate of change of the rate of change. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that there's any more I need to say about the graph now. Mm -hmm. um, Ian, perhaps we ought to talk about um, the... Uh, I want to talk about the bad, the, some of the disadvantages and problems, but I want to finish on the good. Mm -hmm. So uh, let, let's let's harp on. About have we slippage. just very quickly? If we touch on the scaling factors, oh, scaling factors. Yes, 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 talk yes, about yes, it. So that'd be a great that. thing let's just to pick that, up on. Um, that that was quite a beautiful discovery yesterday. The eureka moment of yes. this machine. Yeah. yeah, Ian, what what had mystified you in this machine? Um, what had been so mysterious that you couldn't understand? Uh, this is the drive here to rotate the, the table. You can see everything moving. Mm -hmm. And I was curious why there were these gear reductions of one and a half to one mm -hmm. and th uh, th three to one here. And why those things were actually determined as what they were. Mm -hmm. And we had a eureka moment yesterday when we had plotted this graph for the first time mm -hmm. I had assumed, wrongly, that there was a one-to-one -one relationship um, between the input and the output on the y-coordinate. Mm -hmm. And looking at the totalizer here, mm. it gave 21 units. It did. And on here, it gave 4.75 units. So what on earth is going on? You're, you, yeah. You've made a machine in this yeah. wrong. Yes, that's wrong. You, you, yeah. Your digital timer says yeah. 21, but your yeah. graph only says... 4.75. Yeah. What, what, what was wrong? Well, the penny, the penny dropped. The penny dropped. Dropped, dropped. So if this was going to... So it ended up here at uh, 3.75. 4.75. 4.75, rather. And the total would have been 21. Which would be right up here. Which, if you'd have plotted it, you'd have needed uh, an A2 or an A1 sheet of paper. Mm. Um, so really, it was a scaling factor to keep the output graph... On a piece of A4. On yeah. a four, A4 A4. piece of A4. Yeah. Because 4.75 times, times four and a half, which is the scaling factor, is 21. 21, 21 yeah. yes. And it was a eureka, a re eureka moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one thing about this machine is you've got to be very, very careful about the scaling factors in there in actually quantifying the results. So just very quickly, just because this might confuse people. So mm -hmm. the rods that are coming in here, I'm, it's difficult to do in this, holding this, two this cameras. This rod here, yeah. Yeah, so that's, would you, could you just okay, explain the, what, the, what's this, happening with that rod going in? This rod here um, it is turning uh, at the rate defined by us turning this handle here yeah. when the machine's uh, in operation. No, that's the, the time drive. Oh, so that's the time. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, they, yeah. Yes, that's, yeah. that's, so these so tables. That's right. These, yeah. these tables yeah. are moving along at a certain rate yeah. defined by the number of threads per yeah. inch on here, mm -hmm. and you would expect the number of threads on each uh, or, uh, per inch on here to be exactly matching the number of threads per inch here, except there is a factor that this is actually reduced by four and a half to one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why, why should this not rotate? Exactly the same rate that yeah. this does. Yeah. It's four and a half. It actually ends up being four and a half times slower, mm. and that's a bit mysterious mm. because you think, well, look, hang on a minute. So and all it means is that the paper can be four and a half times smaller. So could you just draw with your hand because I can't do it, it. The direction where the equation's moving through the machine. So it's it's just for, just from back here. So the t the t if you like t yeah. time is coming in here on this shaft underneath the table out here along there. Yep. It's reduced by this train of gears and then it's going back in yeah. to turn the table here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to point out, this is a sliding drive. Oh, that's another good thing. We need a sliding to drive. So. Uh, if I'll have to disconnect what I've already done, yeah. <laughs> reprogram it so I it can... It is just worth make... explaining what Ian and I have made assumptions about all along here. Which... Just take that one off there. 
Now, now we've, we've in the design of this, Ian, you had a choice. You could either move the little wheel yeah. across the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, he wants to bring in as much stability as he can mm -hmm. to the torque converters, because yeah. the torque converters are a bit of a, a, bit of a black art, yeah. really. Once they work, they work, yeah. but we've already found there's a couple of issues. Yeah. So really, you want to leave them alone and not have anything to do with their inputs mucked about with. Yeah. So, so what Ian's done, back. and what Portry did as well, was to leave the little pickup wheel uh, where it is and move the table. Yeah. However, the table needs to turn. So we need to get the table rotation um, translated on a moving table. Yeah. So, um, and we need to do that in synchronism with the rest of the machine. So this sliding um, mechanism um, here, if you've got it. You can probably see it moving. Can you see this sliding along? So all of this is able to rotate and yet slide along here whilst it's rotating at the same time. Uh, I might be able to, <coughs> might be able to demonstrate that. If with I'm, the motor running? With the motor running. That is yeah. what we do. Yeah, yeah. disconnect so the So ju just while Ian's doing that, obviously yeah. there's, there's two movements on the table. So you've got the rotational movement yes. and you've got the, the linear translational movement, movement yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's moving up and down. So yeah. how's that being controlled by, what, what, what aspects are, are, are... Right, the, the screw thread is actually moving the table. Mm -hmm as we've seen on here, and the table drags with it this bush wheel here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as the bush wheel is put, it's, it's actually, there's a, there's a little bolt here, you see the fifth axle here, that actually drives the table. So coming in from the rest of the machine, the four axles here are being driven at each end by both these that three to one gear and that three to one gear at the same time. Yeah. So they're being driven, and the output of this sliding mechanism is the middle shaft here that goes on to drive the yeah. table. And as you can see, so can you see that move?